Alrighty, folks, we got a big, big discussion to uh, have today, so let's not waste any time. Reverse DVD update, so to speak. That's going to be the main thing I talk about in this vlog. And I've got a big box full of uh, DVDs to go through and uh, to talk about over here. So uh, i got a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's not waste any time. First and foremost, about last time with the phony British accent. Try to laugh a little. If you don't have a sense of humor, try to get one, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a send-up of a similar video I did several years ago when I got my retro duo. I mean, I, here's a retro trio, they, yeah, yeah, I do one more of these. I, I tried a phony British accent on my very first Ashens parody ever back in 2008. Got flamed all over the place by humorless Brits with no sense of humor, but they did have a point. I was pretty terrible at that. It was the first time I tried to do a British accent for that long of a time. And uh, yeah, and I've watched the footage nowadays and I wince. I'm like, yeah, I am kind of floating between British, not British, and Australian. So, yeah. This is kind of my attempt to be maybe somewhat better at the Queen's English after over five years since the last time I did one of those. So, yeah, as you can tell, I'm not continuing that stuff here, though. I don't want to drive people completely nuts, but it's kind of a send-up. It's kind of a send-up video because the last time I did a Ashens parody about a Famiclone, I went the whole nine yards with a phony accent and everything. So, uh, hopefully not too many people flame me this time around. So yeah, try and not take it too seriously, because I didn't take it too seriously. I, I, I literally, I don't think it was that great of a review. I really think it was just, you know, more of a pastiche more than anything else. And there'll probably be some things I say about the Retro Trio later on, uh, later on as well, that I didn't really get to cover very well in that video, because I was too busy on sounding like some weird cross between Ashens and Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, so hopefully people don't get too mad at that. And uh, All right. Next update for the main discussion, Ratty Racer works. Finally got this thing working last night when the Retro Trio was set up, and I found out why it was such a pain in the neck to get working. Uh, it is in ratty shape, as you can see. There's a little bit of fading on the label and some what looks like water damage here. And if you hold it like this, the cartridge actually does one of these. So it's, it may have been sat on at some point. But fortunately, the circuit board's a little below the, the plastic casing. So, um, it, yeah, yeah, it has a little bit of give way before the game itself actually breaks. But, uh, yeah, so I got it working. It takes a little bit of, you have to kind of put it in at, uh, off to the side of the uh, cartridge connector. And I found out why, because if I take a look at these bottom contacts on the circuit board, you could try looking at these if you really want, but you probably can't see them. The lighting's probably too terrible. But uh, these bottom contacts, the bottom contacts on this, I'll take pictures to overlay them over the video. The bottom contacts on the Ratty Racer cartridge, they stop about two-thirds of the way to the edge of the circuit board. They stop about two-thirds of the way. And then a little tiny piece of metal continues to the edge. I don't know if that's damage or something, but it, it makes this really a rough game to get working. As opposed to the Nintendo World Cup, which has regular regular contacts going all the way to the edge and not having little slivers touching the edge. So I imagine that probably has something to do with it. Either way, it is possible to get the game working. You just have to put it in off to the side a little, so to speak, and press it down that way. But that's something I'll keep an eye out for when buying any cartridge game. I'm not really used to cartridges having, like, tarnished or, or corroded connectors because... I actually took care of my games when I was a kid, so I didn't really have this problem. So <laughs> It's been all these weird second-hand or flea market games that I've run into these kinds of problems with. So, alright, time to get the big Aldi box. Well, can you even see that it's, yeah, fit and active. Time to get the big Aldi box because what I'm actually thinking of doing is heading back out to that second-hand game store that I uh, went to last weekend. They also trade DVDs as well and other stuff. And I got a couple of a uh, bunch of movies and uh, games. Well, just one game, but I've got a bunch of stuff in this box that I wouldn't mind parting with, and I'm curious what they'll give me for them. Even if it's something stupid like a dollar a disc or fifty cents a disc or something like that, it'd be nice to free up the shelf space. Plus, I know that DVDs are well on their way to being dollar store video discs. Um, yeah, they, they are well on their way to being dollar store video discs. I've literally seen second-hand stores selling them for a dollar, although it might be a little underpriced. The other places are selling them for three-ish. Three-ish is kind of the bottom of what, you, of what you'd pay to get something new, and these are used. So, Some of these are games. I'm going to go over them with some Goo Gone to get the remaining sticker residue off of the cases before trying to uh, trade them in 
try, trade them in or something. And I might go to the store and see what they'll give me for them. Might contact Lukey Games too, but Lukey Games, I don't know if they do movies or not. So most of these are movies. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how all that pans out. The only game that I have in here is Beyond Good and Evil. And I know some people consider this an underrated classic, and will be like, "How come you? How could you do this, Jay?" Well, the the reason why I'm thinking of getting rid of this game, this game specifically, is because this game has compatibility issues with slim PS2s. You need a fat PS2 in order to play this game without the sound skipping. Sometimes the sound starts endlessly skipping until something clears it or something like that. It really ruins the immersion when it glitches in the middle of the game. This is only five dollars when I got it. That's pro I'm guessing that's probably why. So it didn't cost much to begin with and I just want to get rid of the stupid thing. So Beyond Good and Evil uh, there's also a height and HD remake on PlayStation, uh, downloadable for PlayStation 3 and stuff, which I've purchased since then, so pretty redundant. Um, pretty redundant. Don't really uh, need this. Don't really need this anymore. Is this even widescreen? Uh, I, gotta get, I gotta get the labels off of this thing. That's the one and only game. Now let's get on to some movies that I'm saying goodbye to. Mostly, most of these movies are movies that I'm not really too big of a fan of. And they were more like impulse purchases in the days before I started messing with Netflix. So these, a lot of these movies and their DVDs from way before I even got ever messed with Blu-ray. So the first is actually a collection, the World War II collection. It's got 15 DVDs and over 28 hours of black and white footage. I don't know, I might keep this one and just uh, watch the rest of it before trying to get rid of it. Because this is one of those things, it's like, it's, it's what's this, Madassi Entertainment? Madassi, how do you say that? I don't know. But there's this company that changes their name every couple of years. Or maybe there's multiple companies doing this. They'll take old movies or something, and then they'll, they'll just put them on a, a disc. And then they'll sell them as movies and stuff like that. I think a lot of these... A lot of the footage that's on here, the black and white videos from World War II that are on here, could probably be seen on archive.org or something like that. But this is years before I, I didn't even, maybe, yeah, this is years before I even, before I did learned about any of that stuff, really. <laughs> so this goes way back. We're talking like 2004, 2005 when I got this, because it's like, hey, look, 15 DVDs. There's plenty of stuff to play in my computer. I don't even think I watched all of them. All right, on to some movies. The Patriot. The Patriot. A lot of people I knew in college either had this movie or went out and got it shortly after the September 11th attacks as an act of patriotism. Go America! Something like that. This is before the Mel Gibson scandals, and it very much embellishes the American side of the story. And uh, there's a lot of. I even hear that the British accents by from the British uh, the British soldiers in this movie might be an anachronism because, from what I understand. Uh, the Queen's English, as it were, didn't develop until after um, the American Revolution or something like that. It's interesting. Uh, I read an article on that somewhere, but Mel Gibson, The Patriots, big reason why I'm getting rid of this specifically is because I have the Blu-ray version of this. This is redundant. This is redundant. Uh, let's go Let's go through the controversial ones get them over with first. Another movie that I've switched since gotten the Blu-ray version of. Passion of the Christ, that ever so controversial movie that so many people hate. Why do I even bother with this movie on Good Friday, if at all, during the year? Well, the reason why I even bother with this movie is because my dad and I did a little booyah when the controversies about this movie erupted when it came out. Because we've been saying for many years, like, yeah, Hollywood doesn't really portray the crucifixion all that realistically, and if they ever even try to be even remotely realistic, people would freak out about it. What do you know? We were right. So I still have I have this on Blu-ray, not because I'm some sicko or anything, but uh, my dad and I, you know, we kind of had our little booyah moment where everyone freaked out about this movie. So eh, I don't watch it much either. It's kind of a, if it's anything at all, it's a, probably maybe a Good Friday thing or the Saturday between Good Friday and Easter. But uh, yeah. It's really sad to see how so many people have flipped out about this video because, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be about historical type stuff and Roman capital punishment wasn't exactly pretty. So, yeah, maybe a lot of, you know, people complain when Hollywood is Hollywood and they embellish stuff or they romanticize stuff or they're not realistic or they have sound in a space movie. So you see the spaceship going, boom, even though, even though there's no sound in space. <laughs> so... Uh, but then when they decide, when Hollywood, a few times Hollywood decides to not be so Hollywood, people freak out anyways. Anyways, another another questionable movie that was kind of an impulse buy. 
uh, featuring Kiefer Sutherland to end all wars. Depressing, a depressing movie about allied POWs in a Japanese prison camp in Southeast Asia during World War II. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of depressing. Makes a deep philosophical point at the end of the movie, though. What do you do when you look into the eyes of your enemy and you see yourself? But I'm really thinking of getting rid of some of the depressing type movies that I have, besides Passion of the Christ and stuff like that. But uh, I don't really, actually no, I'm looking to cut down the number of movies I have in general because I want more space for games and Blu-rays. DVD is really the sort of thing that I resort to these days if I can't find a Blu-ray version of something. Blu-ray has gotten more than cheap enough that I should just say goodbye to most of these discs if I can. Even if I end up getting like 50 cents for them or something stupid like that. Okay, how about something not so depressing? Something that I can actually laugh at. Dungeons and Dragons. Wrath of the Dragon God. Got this very shortly after The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the Disney uh, version of The Chronicles of Narnia, came out on DVD years before Blu-ray. And this thing was like the anti-Chronicles of Narnia for me. It is so... Oh, you can't help but laugh at a movie like this. The acting is just so horrible. The only reason to get this movie is, that, is because you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan. Quite honestly, though, or you're an RPG fan like I am. But quite honestly, this game, even though I was playing Neverwinter Nights at the time and Neverwinter Nights 2, th th this game, pff, whatever, this movie is so laughable that there are probably LARPers out there that do better acting in their LARP sessions and their LARP games than these, these folks do. <laughs> oh, it's just... And the plot and some of the stuff that I hear is, is so cheesy. It reminds me of a children, the children's cartoons I used to watch when I was little. Yeah, if you're a D&D &D fan, you, you might like this bit. <laughs> ah, impulse purchases are so awesome, aren't they? Kind of like this. Spaceballs! Jay, how can you say such a bad thing about Spaceballs? So many people quote the movie with ludicrous speed and stuff, and it's hilarious. Yes, of course it is. I have the Blu-ray version of this, which is a Blu-ray DVD combo. This is completely redundant. Although I probably will watch it again at some point because the Bon Jovi song in it was on the uh, played over the played over the uh, speakers at work on Friday, so I had hairband Friday at work. So, all right, next up, two Walmart specials of slasher films that I, if I'm interested at all, I might get them on Blu-ray again. But uh, I just saw them just to see them, and they were cheap. They probably and they were cheap when I got them. So, but pretty much the Nightmare on Elm Street Walmart specials. Nightmare 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, Freddy's Dead, Wes Craven's New, Mi New Nightmare, and Freddy vs. Jason. Not the reboot, all the other ones. I think this was kind of like some Walmart special when the reboot was in either in theaters or coming to DVD Blu-ray. Either way, they're DVDs. I mean, uh, saw the whole series once, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I probably should get these on Blu-ray. I should probably just get these on Blu-ray if I ever want to see them again. And probably buy them separately. I'm not exactly a big fan of some of the sequels. Um, but uh, maybe I'm more of a Friday the 13th kind of person. But I saw those on Netflix. So, uh, alright. Speaking of scary movies that I won't mind saying goodbye to. Amityville Horror. Amityville 2 The Possession. And the Michael Bay remake. All on DVD. And all... <laughs> See, I saw, I saw, I heard about the Amityville House on some paranormal show back in the 1990s, and then found out more recently that a lot of it's been kind of debunked. So, but, makes for good movie material. This is probably the one to watch if you're going to watch any of them. And uh, this, has, this Michael Bay remake is somewhat decent, but uh, this is the 70s version. But one of the big reasons I wouldn't mind saying goodbye to these is because Amityville 2, The Possession... This thing is actually, MGM actually at one point had a YouTube channel. I don't know if it's still around, it's been a while, I haven't, haven't been surfing around to it much lately, but MGM at one point had this as a free movie you could watch on YouTube a long time ago. Don't know if that's still the case, but uh, this is before YouTube started doing video rentals, but I remember seeing it, I was like, oh man, Amityville 2 is on there. Not the original, but Amityville 2 is on there, and I got the DVD version of it. Man, that thing's probably more than worthless now. Either way, don't feel like watching it. Alright, <clears throat> moving away from some of the scary stuff towards more historical stuff. Uh, let's see here. Gettysburg and Gods and Generals, about various parts of the Civil War. 
interesting movies, but they're big, long movies. Gettysburg's runtime is 254 minutes, Gods and Generals 219 minutes, and they're on DVD. If I'm going to watch movies this long, I probably should get the Blu-ray versions of them. These are, again, these are impulse buys many years ago, long before I did any messing around with Netflix. Let's see, what other, uh, let's see, what else we got in here? Da, 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 da. Here's one that's so redundant that I don't even think I've watched it. Literally, this has never been played. Look under the other side of the disc. Zero scratches. I don't even think I've ever watched this movie once because I already had it by the time I had this given to me as a gift. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Several years ago at work, we were we constantly referenced this movie when talking about our numbers for the month and stuff like that in the in the team meetings and things like that. And one time I did something I can't remember what it was, but it was really impressive to the management. And they went out and bought me a copy of of the movie. The problem is uh, it slipped their mind that I was really tired one morning because I was up till two in the morning watching this movie on a two movie set that I have, two Clint Eastwood movies, this and Hang 'Em High. So I already seen the. I, so. Um, must have slipped their minds on, but yeah, this is actually in pretty much new condition. It has no scratches on it, and I don't even think I've even watched it all the way through. I kind of like just put it in to see if there were any interesting special features, but it's basically the good, the bad, and the ugly on DVD, and there's a Blu-ray version of it out now, so. do da All the folks who don't have a lot of money that want to upscale that sucker in a PlayStation can help themselves and be my guest. All right, let's next uh, see if we can get through the rest of this here. Stuff that is more um, stuff that is more supernatural in nature. Let's just ra ramble through all of these and stuff. I I tend to like movies where people speculate about God and the afterlife and stuff like that. Usually to see what kind of things they can do and what kind of special effects they can incorporate as well. But these are both movies that are based on New York Times bestsellers that I didn't find all that interesting. Conversations with God and Five People You Meet in Heaven. It's kind of like touched by an angel in that respect. A bunch of people, pe bunch of people, you know, come up with some story or something along those lines, and uh, it looked kind of. It was an impulse. These were impulse buys. They weren't that expensive either. So, uh, yeah, um, this one's about a guy who passes away and meets people from his past on his way to the afterlife. It's kind of like a family. It's like a familyed up version of Beetlejuice almost, but no Beetlejuice. And this is all very depressing because when I was laid off and the bottom dropped out for me, I couldn't help but think of this movie because the guy in this movie is actually homeless for a bit because he can't get a job. So, kind of, kind of depressing and weird type stuff and I wouldn't mind saying goodbye to him. Maybe there'll be an impulse buy for someone else who'll be curious and then trade it in a week later. <clears throat> Alright, what else we got? The Left Behind Kirk Cameron series. I grew up in an evangelical Christian kind of environment and uh, don't identify with that anymore. I'm more of a mainline person with the Lutherans I'm involved with these days. But I eventually, it was just out of curiosity, picked up the Left Behind movies. These are cheesy. They're thinly veiled preaching. They're, it's like watching a church play shot with a movie camera. They're, if you want to watch um, apocalyptic, eh, apocalyptic movies about the end of the world and stuff like that, these two, I'd probably pass these two up for the Jack Van Impey series. There actually is a similar series that came out, I don't know if it came out around the same time, but there's a similar series where that's a lot more like a real movie and not like church play plus plus. So, I think, I know Left Behind, I think, um, who is it? There's a remake in the works with uh, Nicolas Cage or something like that. Uh, might check that out. Might check that out maybe in Netflix or something like that. Might get a disc subscription or something again to see it that way, but... Uh, or just Redbox it or something along those lines. I haven't tried Redbox yet. Yeah, Left Behind, then Left Behind 2, Tribulation Force. There's a Left Behind 3 that I never even got, <laughs> which says it all. <laughs> Goodbye. Good riddance. Not very exciting, even for end-of-the-world movies. Speaking of The Rock, awesome movie. Awesome movie. First Blu-ray I ever saw which makes the DVD completely redundant, because I have it on Blu-ray. Likewise, in that in that category, Wall Street. Got it on Blu-ray. Nice morality tale about business ethics. I knew a lot of people in college that had this movie, some of whom were given it to, uh, given as a graduation gift. Hey, you're going off to business school. Don't be in some scandal or something with what you learned in that college we're spending all this money for. So I eventually wound up with this. I had a friend who had this movie at one point and uh, borrowed the DVD from, saw it in college, liked it, got one for myself, and uh, now I've got it on Blu-ray. This is redundant. 
Gotta get Money Never Sleeps sometime, too, although that did have a little bit of sequelitis going on. What's left? What do we got left to go over here? Almost time for lunch, too. Well, this is something, this is probably the one that people are going to be questioning me about the most. Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, two-disc special edition. Now, I liked Holy Grail. It had a nice, consistent story to it. Life of Brian, a little cheesier, but still, same deal. This is like a bunch of Saturday Night Live skits. It's so random. It's so random that I'd rather not give myself a headache trying to figure it out. I, this is, I don't know what drugs these guys were on when they put this together, but it is the most random Python film I've ever seen, and I don't feel like giving myself another headache trying to watch it again, trying to figure out what the heck's going on there. At least it does stick to the meaning of life theme loosely, but not without the most random assortment of stage stuff, whatever. Da, 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 da. All right, what do we have left here? Uh, American History X. Uh, this was a movie that some folks watched in college because, ha oh, oh, the guys swear at it and they use bad words. But uh, I actually wound up getting this as a result of uh, hearing about it from some folks who were, of course, anti-racist, and they recommended this movie as an example of how hatred can cause so many problems in a family, you know, and then how hatred and bigotry can cause so many problems in a family. And it is a very depressing film. It's an extremely depressing film, especially at the end when uh, something really bad happens that I'm not going to spoil. But uh, it did win awards and stuff like that. But I'm trying to cut down on some of the depressing movies that I have and maybe watch something that's not as that doesn't leave me all bummed out at the end. So, uh, <laughs> all right, another one that I wouldn't mind saying goodbye to, and even still has some of the plastic that it, from when I had to peel it off. Independence Day. This was a popular movie in the. This was a popular movie in the 90s. We'd watch this on all kinds of field trips, but watching it with grown-up eyes, as I try and get the remaining plastic off of it, watching it with more grown-up eyes, so to speak. Uh, I uh, just like, yeah, it was cool watching the big laser beams blow up the Empire State Building 20 years ago, but it just, it's, it's just. If you see the honest trailer for this movie, you'll know exactly why I just can't watch it anymore. I'd rather watch the Matrix sequels than this. <laughs> Will Smith is hilarious as usual, uh, except in that one movie when uh, <laughs> After Earth. <laughs> Not even touching that one with a ten foot pole. But uh, yeah, Independence Day. It's on Blu-ray if I want to get a Blu-ray version of it, but I just uh, a little tacky. Liked it when I was little. Not so much now that I've grown up. And I imagine there's other people I imagine that share my sentiments on this matter. What's this doing in here? Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. This should be an honorable mention, actually. We'll save that for later. As I do have honorable mentions, I'll eventually talk about Billy Blank's typo. <laughs> I liked typo in high school when we did it in gym class, but uh, later on, got this DVD and uh, found out that there were no chapters, so you literally had to do the entire DVD from, or I think there's no chapters. I basically hit the back button because I wanted to try a move again. It went all the way back to the beginning, so yeah, not really, not really impressed. It's made, it, it was made obsolete largely by the Exer games that I bought since then. My Fitness Coach and Your Shape Fitness Evolved do everything that this DVD does, except I can change the exercises and I can actually have a computer brain behind the scenes doing all that stuff. So made obsolete, made obsolete. Larry the Cable Guy, get her done. I might actually, I'm having second thoughts. I might keep this one. <laughs> Classic uh, redneck humor, though I understand this guy's not really that kind of person, but uh, get her done. I don't know. You know what? I'll make this an honorable mention. Make this an honorable mention and keep it. All right, three more. Three more to go before the box is empty. Let's do, uh, all right, first night. Got it because it had a knight on the cover, and I was into RPGs and World of Warcraft and stuff, so I was like, oh, what's this movie about? And uh, it's interesting, to say the least, but uh, nothing too special. Uh, nothing too special. Maybe I'll get a Blu-ray version of it later if I ever want it back. But I, I think now's the time. Any DVDs that I'm on the fence about, I think now's the time probably to get rid of them. Because who knows how much the value of these things is going to plummet, especially as we get more of these 15 and under deals for Blu-ray in the stores now. It used to be that you couldn't get decent movies on Blu-ray in big in big box stores, but they're catching on, and they're actually catching up. So uh, now, is, if there's ever been a time to dump off DVDs, now is basically it. Cellular. I got this mixed. Uh, cellular looked interesting, but wasn't all that. Didn't really like it all that much. 
about this lady that gets kidnapped, and uh, it's all about basically old flip phones going slowly going dead while they're trying to uh, while they're trying to rescue this lady from these criminals that have her kidnapped or something like that. It's meh. I thought it would be like phone booth, but I was wrong. So wasn't anywhere near as interesting. And lastly, uh, National Security. I didn't even know this was a comedy movie. I thought it was like something about like uh, I thought it, I didn't even know it was what it was. Uh, it can't be comedy about police officers that become secure that get fired and have to be security guards and one guy that wants to be a cop and never. It, it's just yeah, it's funny is it's funny, but uh, it's not something I really watch a lot. So it wasn't that expensive to, in the first place. Time to get rid of it. That's the thing with DVDs right now. DVDs right now, anything that I'm on the fence about, I'm thinking now's the time to get rid of them before we really start seeing the uh, trade in value plummet. When some of the some more people find out that the retail stores are actually catching up when it comes to this kind of stuff. Okay, honorable mentions. I'm not getting rid of these. I'm not getting rid of these, but if I do this again, they might go next. Larry the Cable Guy, Geter Dunn. This was funny when I got it, but I might be more into like Jim Gaffigan's uh, routines nowadays. But uh, I might keep this around just to have it around. I don't know if there's a Blu-ray version of this, so that's why I'm holding on to it because uh, yeah. I'd like to have it around in some form, but I don't think there's a Blu-ray of it. Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think I'll keep this until I get a Blu-ray version of it, and then I'll get the rest of the series on Blu-ray. This is actually the uh, this is actually the collector something version, or, but it's not like a regular DVD. You just uh, it opens up into a wardrobe, and then here's the actual case, which looks like a wardrobe. That was kind of interesting. I've read the book, and I thought this I thought the movie was awesome, but. Uh, it's it's a DVD, so uh, maybe I should eh, maybe I should put now nah, let's put it back in the box. Say goodbye to this because I know the series is out on Blu-ray and there might even be a box set for it. <clears throat> along the lines of the revelation of the uh, not the revelation uh, along the I already well there's the spoiler along the lines of the Left Behind movies is Revelation, which is the second movie in the Jack Van Impe evangelicalish series about the end of the world and stuff like that. And uh, this is actually a lot more watchable than any of the Kirk Cameron stuff is. So uh, this entire series, it's a lot more, there's more drama, and there's a lot more movie elements rather than just thinly veiled preaching or church play plus plus. So I'll keep this around, but it might go next time because I don't really watch these kinds of movies anymore. Speaking of movies, I can't really, that I don't really th watch too much anymore. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. This is, the, this, the ill-fated Final Fantasy movie was actually my very first DVD ever. So, I won some kind of gift card for Best Buy and went and picked this up. There's a Blu-ray version of it out now. Nowadays, it's largely been upstaged by Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. But this movie, which did so poorly that it tanked and bankrupted Square Pictures, it was a great tech demo back in 2001. And a lot of the technologies that are on display in this now somewhat probably dated film uh, found their way into various video games throughout the rest of the decade. So, including Final Fantasy games as well. So, but it's DVD. There's actually a there is actually a, a Blu-ray version of this out now, I believe. And uh, but I don't know if I want to get it. I mean, this was my first DVD ever. I might just keep it just for that reason alone. So it's an honorable mention. The rest are all. Oh no, one more movie. Steve Irwin's The Crocodile Hunter. The only Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter movie there was. I'm keeping it because it's the Crocodile Hunter. Don't really like it too much, but this guy was hilarious uh, back before his life was sadly cut short by that Stingray incident about ten years ago or so. So, The rest of the honorable mentions that I'm thinking of getting rid of later are games. First, Psychonauts. Awesome game, very underrated, didn't sell very well. It's the uh, cover art's in black and white because this was a second-hand GameStop copy that didn't have the cover art, so I just re so I just printed one off the internet so I wouldn't have a blank case. But uh, yeah, Psychonauts, uh, Psychonauts, and uh, it's available on Steam nowadays. So <clears throat> it's available on Steam nowadays. So I'm wondering if I should play the PC version instead. Lego Batman. This was the pack-in game with my PS2 Slim. I got It was a Lego Batman special when I went and got it uh, to replace my uh, second-hand fat PS2 when I found that I was actually interested in playing PS2 games on a regular basis. So, uh, yeah, Lego Batman. 
Lego Batman, there's a, there's a PS3 version, I believe, so I don't know. This is the old standard def one, and the widescreen settings don't stay on when you exit the game. So even though it was a packing game and it's got a big not-for-resale in the corner, I might just uh, see if I can get, get something for this, too, because there's a PS3 version that I could play instead. And, of course, a game that, another game that's had an HD, two games, actually, that have had HD remakes on PS3, which uh, makes me wonder if I should even bother with the PlayStation 2 versions of them anymore. Final Fantasy X and X-2. Yes, I checked out X-2. Laugh it up. I was curious, how the heck could you turn Yuna into a pop star? But, uh, yeah, Final Fa the Final Fantasy X's have been redone in HD. There's an HD remake out now, which makes me wonder if I even want to bother finishing. I didn't really like these two games, though. That's the problem, because the, the really depressing theme of this with death all over the place, and this came out around the same time as the Final Fantasy movie. Still in the pile over here. This came out around the same time as the Final Fantasy movie, when I believe Hironobu Sakaguchi's mother passed away. So he was all... He's all thinking about death and morbid stuff, and some of it found its way into this game. I don't know why people like it so much. Maybe because it was the first fully voiced Final Fantasy game, but uh, I might just get the remit. I might get the uh, HD version of this, and then just I don't know what I'm going to do with these two. <laughs> so because uh, they, they knowing there's an HD remake of those, it looks horrible. They look horrible on PS2 with no upscaling and stuff like that. So. Yep, that's my reverse DVD updates. That frees up, as you can imagine, from how much time I've spent talking about this stuff. That frees up a ton of space. Uh, that frees up a ton of space in my shelves that can be used for Blu-rays, better movies that I actually would want to watch on a more regular basis, or games, which is really, I mean... <laughs> I'm finding myself that I'm more of a game person than a movie person these days, so I want to get... I wouldn't mind getting rid of some Blu-rays, too. Um, I might even I'll see if this if this second hand shop is doing anything with Blu-ray yet, but um, there's some Blu-rays that I'm kind of on the fence about that I wouldn't mind freeing up the space with. Depends on what they depends on what I can get for them though, because that we're talking Amazon prices for those about five, six, seven years ago, or no five something like that, two thousand nine ish, yeah, about five years ago when I first started messing around with Blu-ray and was looking for movies to watch. But Blu-ray is just so cheap nowadays. Blu-ray is what DVD used to be, and DVD, of course, is even cheaper. So anybody who just upscales DVD, you know, they don't, you know, I mean, if people don't have a lot of money, if they don't have a lot of money and uh, they just want, they want a big selection in the second-hand stores, they can probably just upscale something or something like that. But that's a whole other discussion entirely about whether or not upscaled DVD has any real merit anymore. Oh yeah, how could I forget? One last honorable mention, and it's the newest DVD that I have. Phantom of the Opera. The 2004 Gerard Butler uh, version that... Um, yeah, I almost missed this one. The 2004 uh, Gerard Butler version. Interesting movie. Picked it up for five bucks at Target because I was like, wait, there's a Phantom of the Opera movie? Yeah, shows how behind the times I was. Uh, but they didn't have the Blu-ray version, so I just got it just to check it out and eventually got the Blu-ray version of it, as well as the 2011 Royal Albert Hall and the horrendous sequel, well, the Australian production. So this one's notably better, but uh, I still don't think Phantom of the Opera, uh, the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, really needed... Uh, the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Phantom of the Opera, how successful it's been, really needed a sequel. But, as you can see, Blu-rays, Blu-rays, Blu-rays. Although I do have a friend who might be interested in the DVD version of this, but I'll have to figure that out. Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> quickest I've ever gotten rid of a DVD. Let's see what I can get for it. I could take it back to Target, but it's been opened, so... All right, time to fix up some lunch and uh, go over with some go over some of the stickers on some of those cases with some goo gone. See if I can clean those up, and then maybe take a trip, check check out this secondhand store and uh, check out the secondhand game store, which also takes DVDs. See what they'll give me for them. It'll help me free up a lot of space at the very least. Not like I need to get tons of money for these movies, and I know they're not worth tons of money because they're DVDs. So, dollar store video disc for people that for whatever reason, don't have the money to mess with Blu-ray, although that's, that crowd is going to get smaller and smaller as uh, these big box stores continue waking up to the fact that if you price Blu-ray at a competitive level, and people and people have a PlayStation 3 or something like that, they'll actually get the stuff. All right. Now, time for a big glass of water, a little bit of lunch, and then see what I can do with all of this. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by. Thank mm -hmm. you.